Okay, and welcome to another edition of the Race Hour podcast brought to you with our friends at gambling.com. And also, happy to give a mention out to our latest sponsor and all the way up until the Cheltenham Festival, and that's the fellas at Bet Hard. Okay, we are going to move on to what we promised, which was a Gold Cup anti post look at the market. Uh, for the big race, the Friday of the Cheltenham Festival, of course. We have talked about presenting Percy on this podcast. Of course, we saw it come back and win the Golmoy hurdle at Gorham Park. We've got Native River to come out this weekend along with Clanders Ovo. We saw Bells Hill go and win an Irish Gold Cup. At Kenboy, they've decided they're going straight to the Cheltenham Festival, will not be seen again. That means it'll be 77 days between that one's last win, which was an impressive win. Another race that also Paddy talked about how David Mullins was able to give him what we consider a brilliant ride, but also in the in the in the view that Willie Mullins probably wouldn't have given him a hard time if it went wrong. It went right. So Ken Boy's in a really good position there. Album photo, they skipped the weekend. Road to respect, we've seen. Thistle crap, we've also seen in the King George and running somewhere near his best. Then we get to Frodon. Then we get to Mike Bite, who, well, this time last year was favourite for the Gold Cup. Uh, and then we get to the likes of Size and John. This race could be unbelievable, but is presenting Percy the star that they all have to be. I go to Paddy first. Um, I suppose Pat Kelly is just seems such a genius at producing the horse um you know he, he doesn't he doesn't take many shots at the target with him um he keeps things to a minimum i mean have they said about where they're going to go next are they going to go back to to uh for the red mills chase I think they do the, yeah i think they'll do the two mile four race at goran park and same prep as last year worked for them seems to make sense that's what they'll do so one more yeah, round. I mean, look, he's round about fours. He's not terrific value, is he, when you know, you've know you got Native River in there sort of between six and seven. Um, but nonetheless, it's just the thing about this horse is it's just his festival record is so good. Um, it really is, you know, and it just seems, like I said, that um, his trainer produces him literally down to the minute. So it's it's hard to look past him. Um you know, it's 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 he's obviously not been the easiest to keep right, but you know, nonetheless, he is low mileage and just his overall profile is very very good. And you couldn't help but be pleased with what we seen the other day. I know it's over hurdles, but still, it's the same route as what he took last year. And um, you know, although he 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 didn't go and win by six seven lengths, he's 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 not going to get older without getting wiser. So he's only going to do the required amount. But I'm sure that Pat Kelly was chuffed a bit with him. It had to be. And he looked like to have his ears pricked as well, even when, you know, the race still needed to be put to bed. And I think that was still in him. So David Russell couldn't hide his excitement. Dermo, are you excited? Oh, massively. Um, I've kind of, I've taken him on so many times now, Dean, and lost that I've kind of bowed my head to him. And he's a fantastic horse. He probably should never have been in a attempt in the first place. He probably should have been going for Albert Bartlett's or, or whatever else. But he's, uh, he's, a tremendous horse. Uh, the way he won last time only uh, only bodes even better for, towards a Gold Cup picture. Really, just he showed that he's alive, firstly, and that he stays and stays and stays. And he jumps the fence beautifully. When we'll see him again, he could probably drop back and trip if he wanted him to. He just ticks all the boxes, and um, he definitely is the one to beat. He's versatile. He loves Cheltenham. He's got a great record there. He's trained by what seems to be a genius with only a small group of horses. There's very little you would imagine that can go wrong. So touch wood, presenting Percy turns up. We'll go our favourite for the race. I don't think we're going to see anything from Native River or Clanders Oba this weekend that's going to make any difference to presenting Percy's position in the market. I can't see them usurping him for favourite. Um, let's talk about Ken Boy, because Ken Boy we're not going to see again. I think we know what we know about him, and that's the way it's going to stay. Demo, Ken Boy, a player in this race? I mean, if we're not going to put Present and Percy up from a value perspective, where are you going to go? Uh, yes, yeah, so just the next few in the market. Uh, Road to Respect and Bells Hill, as brilliant a finish as that was, I think Road to Respect, he's a year older now, absolutely no doubt, but he's not a Gold Cup horse, and as, as Bells Hill isn't either. They're both lovely horses who will pay their way for, for connections. Uh, Tis is crack. I'm not sure how much is left in him. I'm happy enough to kind of forget about him as well, to be honest. Uh, in regards to this race, I think it was just great to see him back to some bit near his best. But um, I hope I'm wrong. But I don't think he's up to this. Uh, if the rain starts to fall, well, then you'd bring Native River back into it. And when you go on to Kenboy, then I'm just not sure how much of that performance was down to that move by David Mullins or like. He could be very good, but I'm just, again, I, he kind of falls into the Clandazobo camp for me in that 
those races at Christmas, the, the King George and the old Lexus or the Savile Chase, I believe it's called now, is um, we don't know where we stand with these horses and like where were they in these big novice races? And, you know, are, like have they just taken these big, big races because either horses didn't run or didn't fire? And I firmly believe that that is the answer with them. And if, if they win the Gold Cup, I'll hold my hands up and say fair enough. But again, Kenboy, I just can't have him. And the one at the bigger odds, Dean, that I, I do believe is a lot, is the best of the Mullins Brigade. And I think Presenti Percy would have beaten him last year in the RSA, but he wasn't, he was far from finished. And a lot of people keep saying that he was done at the second last. I agree with what Stephen Cass said last week. He wasn't, uh, you know, Ruby kind of just soaked him up into the race and he met that second last fence wrong. A lot of horses meet that fence completely wrong. Like that's that's why they're redoing the fence now going into Cheltenham. Like he showed this year again how talented he is when he puts it all together. Uh, when he won the Savas Chase at Tremor, beating invitation only now for the Zopo, who both went on and obviously fought out the Taisi's Chase. And then you had Total Recall in third, who Album Photo actually had to give him 10 pounds that day. After that, then, I mean, last season he won the Grade One Reiner Gold Cup at, at at Ferry House and was obviously going to win at Punchestown when uh, when Paul Townend decided that he was going to run out. So the each way alternative I have here is Alvin Foda, who I'm very keen on, but uh, I think he'd be chasing home, presenting Percy. Yep. Okay. I, I think there's plenty of there's plenty of juice in that price. It's around 16s for yeah. the Channel Gold Cup is Albion Photo and has done nothing wrong on route there, considering you know a last fence blip in a Punchestown Gold Cup is aside, nothing to do with him. Um it's gonna be he's a definitely a live contender. Paddy, I'm gonna let you pick your way through the field. Try and find us a bit of each way value if we can't all back Percy right now. Yeah, I think that album photo he just deserves a change of look more than anything, to be honest, because he is a very high class horse. And I think if things were to drop into his lap a little bit, you know, he could he could be a live contender, this horse, and he probably represents a bit of value. I mean, we've just got so many of this field here, you know, that have got Ryanair entries as well. So you just don't know where they're gonna go. I mean, obviously Kemboy's got a Ryanair entry. Um even the other horse uh, but you'd imagine all me they're going to go there with road respect. But two A per me who who won the that that pretty competitive chase, yeah, around Turles the other day. I mean, this horse all he does is stay. I mean, he nearly got beat around Turles the other day because he just is a little bit. I won't say slow, but he takes a bit of stoking, and he only just got there on the line. But um, one thing about him is he fences well. He's very very tough, and I mean, he's won a Tri Town. Um, you know, he just looks very, very game. And, and, and I think if it turned up, although the ground at Turles wasn't actually that bad, I think if it got testing, um, but same thing, he's got a Ryanair entry and you'd imagine they're, they'd be looking at road to I'd respect. imagine they're looking at Gold Cup next year with that horse. Yeah, maybe they? so. They've, they've got... Maybe they'd see a small field opportunity and go for something like a Gold Cup. But I just think they're probably aiming that way. He looks a type. We need new ones to come through. Um, he could be a type. I mean, if, would you be an album photo man then if... We couldn't back Percy. Yeah, I, d- I definitely think, you know, there's great value to be had there, um, you know, because yeah. really, for me, you, you couldn't have road to respect uh, and the likes in, in, in front of him in the betting, really. Um, I think Album Photo is, is, is a much better horse. Um, you know, even the likes of Tissa Crack there, I mean, he's roundabout sort of similar price, but, he is, yeah. you know, he's he's looking at the minute for me, but like I said, it's all it's all down to him having a bit of luck and he seems to have had nothing but generally bad luck. But I think pre- presenting Percy, because of his Cheltenham profile, he he's just short enough. That's your only thing. But I just yeah. think he, he he's, he's, he's got a master trainer. He really has... You know, he knows his way so well around the place. Um, he, he's difficult to look past. So you've got to, you've got to, you've got to look for a bit of value there. And I, I would agree with Dermo. I think there's not a bad show at all with 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 Album Photo. Okay, I want to throw two more horses into the mix of discussion because Elegant Escape ran. Um, some people would say blotted his copybook behind Froden at Cheltenham last time. I thought he was only getting going at the end and there's a bit further to go in a Gold Cup. I don't think at 25 to 1 he's properly estimated in this market just yet. You have to remember he was gambled off the boards to win a, a Welsh National and went and did it almost on the bride. It was massively impressive. And the other one is Mike Bite. Mike Bite, favourite for this race at this time last year, um, obviously got beat by Native River. If they get 
they're going to do is wind. If they get him there in any kind of similar shape, he's massively overpriced at 20 to 1. Paddy? Yeah, I'd agree with you about the, the Tizard horse, especially, uh, Dino, because, but do you know what? he done that. Did he do it? Was it the RSA he ran in last year? Um, yeah. You know, same same thing. He just gets done for a bit of boot at a real vital part of the race. Um, same as your day, because there was no horse in that race, even Frodon, there was no horse going to the line stronger than the Tizard horse. Um, you know, he just lacks that mid-race just that bit of pace to hold his position, his winning position. Uh, he just loses that, and and the business end just gets away from him because uh, he's all about jumping and staying this horse. But same thing again, as we mentioned about the the two per me of of no meat. They've got time on yeah. their side with this horse, but um, you know I think he's got a real real big one in him. Uh, but whether he is just maybe you'd say experienced enough to to to. Um, to win a big one this year, I don't know, but I, I and a bit of tactical speed missing, maybe from tactical, what you get that's normally word, yeah. in, in a gold cup horse. So I, I can I can understand that. Maybe maybe that twenty fives isn't that overestimating. Then on that basis, is a very fair point. Where do you stand on a, on a might bite? He's, he ran. We've seen him. He didn't run up to his normal level, nowhere near it. And now they've gone for the wind. He didn't run between the King George and the Gold Cup last year, so the break I don't think any issue. The issue is going to be whether this wind up works and what shape they're getting back in. Yeah, but he, he's just desperately underperformed, hasn't he? And you know, he, absolutely, it's, it's, it's re, you know, you can always forgive a horse a bad one, but you've got to forgive him two awful ones now. And he's just, I don't know, the wheels have come off for me. And you know, I always like to to see, you know, even if a horse finish doesn't finish in the money, you like to see something at some part part of a race where you could say, well, you know, he's done okay up until here, or maybe he didn't travel, but he actually finished off okay. It might bite. Uh, he's not really give us anything to, to sort of clutch on to. So for me, I'd, I'd really be ready to pass him over at the minute. Big task ahead. Okay, so Demo, album photo, final shout. Yeah, uh, just on Elegant Escape, I think if you're going to back Elegant Escape at 25, is a horse with a similar profile who's going to be staying all day as well. And you actually get 40s about him. His invitation only. Um, yeah. He won't be stopping at all at the line at, I wouldn't be shocked to see him place kind of like Manella Rocco did a few years ago. But I think the likes of Invitation Only and Elegant Escape will be the two horses that will kick on for the likes of a Grand National, really. Um, Fair enough. I don't think we've let anything else out. And might bite, unfortunately, Dean, I just think he's gone at the game. Uh, I really do. But the, I just think he's he's kind of done a Sam Spinner on it. I, I think he's he was always a bit of a mad bastard and we love that about him. But I think he's kind of boiled over a small bit. Um Album photo, yeah, Dean just he's the one for me each way at 14. I think he's a touch of class. He'd be much shorter in the betting now if those two bits of bad luck didn't happen to him at the Cheltenham and Punchestown festivals. Had a brilliant performance last time. Unfortunately, couldn't run on Sunday because of the ground. They might get another run into him. If they don't, it wouldn't overly worry me. And I think he's a, he's a horse going forward who will, who will outrun that price anyway. Okay. We all like album photo, I think. Uh, we all like presenting Percy too, but album photo 16s and presenting is in there at three to one favour. I think that tells you where you might be having a little nibble at the Gold Cup market right now. You've been listening to the Race Hour podcast brought to you with gambling.com and also our friends at Bethard. Thank you very much, Paddy Asport and Dermot Nolan. We will do this all again next week, of course. Check out gambling.com today for up-to-date horse racing trends, betting news, and strategy guides. Take advantage of our exclusive bonus offers for the biggest online bookmakers and casinos. At gambling.com, we write daily tipping pieces on the biggest sports. We find the best prices so you don't have to. Make placing a bet easier. Visit gambling.com today.